Today we are going to do a pH calibration. Okay, so first you need to remove the pH meter from the distilled water. And whenever you're drying it, dab it lightly so you don't hurt the electrode. Um, we're going to be measuring the pH, start measuring the pH of acid, so we're going to calibrate it with the 7 buffer first. And then while you're calibrating that, you're going to wait for the meter to stabilize before you enter the 7 pH volume on the screen. And then once you've taken the pH of the 7, you're going to move on to the 4. If you were doing a base, you'd move on to 10 rather than 4, but you'd always start with the 7. Each time a calibrator is taken out of one solution, it needs to be thoroughly washed with distilled water. Um, specifically make sure that the electrode is thoroughly rinsed off. Um, and again, the process that was used at the beginning where you dab off the distilled water should be repeated again. Um, after this, the calibrator will be placed in a solution with a pH of 4 because we are measuring the pH of values of acidic solutions. Um, the same process should be used to find or to calibrate it at the 4. Okay, so once the pH is calibrated to read the 4 through 7, you're going to want to clean it off again uh, with the deionized water and dab it with a paper towel. And then you're going to reread the pH buffer 7 in order to make sure that it's able to read the pH properly. So you're going to put it in the buffer 7 solution, and once that is in there, you're going to wait and see if it's reading it properly, and it should read at 7. Um, if it doesn't read 7, you're going to want to recalibrate uh, the meter. So once the pH is calibrated, uh, we... <coughs> Okay, so this is a titration between a strong base and a weak acid. Uh, so the pH should go up as the base is put into the uh, weak acid. Once the pH stabilizes, you want to record that into your notebook. Um, at this point in the lab, you no longer need to wash the calibration meter after each trial because you're measuring the same the pH of the same solution. Um, what should also be taken into account is that the difference between a strong and a weak acid is that a strong acid will completely dissociate into ions, whereas a weak acid will only partially dissociate. And this means that um, because a strong acid is completely dissociating into ions, it, you can't really measure its equilibrium because there are no reactants remaining at the end of the reaction, whereas a weak acid you can't measure the equilibrium because the forward and reverse reaction is occurring. Um, and if you need, if you wanted to minimize the effects um, on the strong acid, you could put a strong acid in a buffer because the buffer will undergo an equilibrium reaction which will keep the pH um, of the overall solution near the buffer's pH. Also, you do not need to consider solids or liquids whenever you're um, writing the equilibrium equation because they, their values are considered one because they're a pure substance so they aren't actually part of the solution. And whenever you are finished uh, and you have gotten the pH of the solution, um, when you're done with it all, you want to wash off your pH meter uh, with the ionized water and then store it in the ionized water. Um, and then once that is done, you can just clean everything up.
大プラシャー。